Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. Greetings beloved citizens. It seems job scala becomes the unifier as opposition factions clash at the Harare Magistrate Courts. A red race of activity was experienced at Harare Magistrate Court yesterday as the main opposition C leader and former member of parliament for Zengeza, Job Sikala, was paraded before the courts for the further hearing of his alleged case. Sikala, who has spent close to two years in unlawful incarceration, saw his day in court once again yesterday. Scores of picketing supporters of the main opposition thronged the vicinity of the courts chanting slogans and singing revolutionary songs in support of Scala amid a deployment of riot police armed to the teeth. The ever mass-fearing government of Emerson Mnangagwa responded with such heavily armed riot police as they anticipated an foreseeable uprising of citizens in a potentially volatile nation. Zimbabwe is a politically simmering teapot nation and any time there is a potential explosion that could lead to an implosion beyond Mnangagwa's control. While ZANU-PF arrogantly threatens and brags that security is ready to pounce on picketers, the young Zimbabweans yesterday braved it out and expressed their displeasure to ZANU-PF over the treatment of the scala case. The picketing of the young people at the magistrate court yesterday effectively sent a chilling message to Mnangagwa not to take things lightly. ZANU-PF has lit many fires around them and the possibility of an unexpected turnout of events is very, very high. Zimbabwe is in a possible volcanic eruption situation and without notice anything can happen to the utter shock of those in positions of power. Job Scala's case attracted scores of people from all walks of life, ranging from the media, business community, members of the Zengesa community, opposition supporters, lawyers, non-governmental organizations, officers of diplomatic missions as well as politicians. Of significant note was the congregation of both Triple C faction members, all coming to show solidarity with the revolutionary icon, a sight that got me thinking. Opposition leaders who converged at the courts include Joanna Mamombe, Gift Ostalo Siziba, Mabvuku MP Kufa Agutizu, Takudzu Wankadziwori, and other senior party leaders. A somewhat thin-looking Tendai Biti was also a show at the courts, accompanied by Chowton Wende and others. Many other well-known figures were present too, with the visibly shaken and tearing Mazibaba Eshanduko impossible to miss amongst the congregants. The main question then becomes, to which faction does Job Scala belong, since it seems all opposition factions want to identify with him? Scala is on record having refused to sign a letter that would have associated him with Chawang, and he has previously openly sided with the Triple C leader Nelson Chamisa. I am very sure Job Scala understands the political dynamics at play out there, though he could be behind bars for a very long time. If Sikala is released from prison, many interesting developments are likely to take place that could set a different trajectory to the struggle for freedom against dictatorship in Zimbabwe. It seems the main Wiwa remains a powerhouse figure, no wonder all factions want to align with him. Sikala has been a principled leader who in the past has sold his parliamentary car and used the money to build a community library. 
He is also very popular for taking care of many disadvantaged people in his community and constituents. Such a man understands the purpose of the struggle we are fighting, and I see no reason why he can identify himself with the rats who are knocking on SunPF's doors daily looking for an employment as sellouts. People like Chabangu, Monzora, Biti, Ngube, Pugeni and others are politicians who have squandered their political capital. The future of their political career is cloudy and men like Job Scala should have totally nothing to do with them if they are to make a political difference where we are going. Coming to Job Scala's case, it is very clear that ZANU-PF is simply politicking while they continue to jeopardize and expose the Zimbabwean judiciary negatively. Magistrate Tafadzwa Miti ruled that although Scala and Stole did not post the video to incite violence, it was indeed them on the video and there is proof enough that it was them that uttered the inciting words. The defense lead counsel Harrison Nkomo, however, said they shall appeal the case in the high court. Munangagwa understands the power that Job Scala wields, and it is high time sense knocks in his skull before the situation deteriorates to levels beyond redemption. Information under carpet suggests that Scala had won the favor of top military guys with whom he held meetings selling the new Great Zimbabwe agenda and how the military could be accommodated in it, and that was like fire in Munangagwa's pants. Scala too was so outspoken and is on record calling Munangagwa a big lizard. Amongst those working to bring the opposition down from within, Scala is believed to have refused Munangagwa's 30 silver coins like many did. A thing that angered the ever unforgiving Munangagwa who decided to administer some punishment using some bogus criminal allegations. The more blessing Ali Saga one that became the Sarajevo assassination to Scala's incarceration still hangs in the balance up to this day. More Blessing's body is still not buried and the family claims they do not even know where ZANU-PF government has moved it to. Scala instigated a thorough search for more Blessing and unveiled a lot of conspiracies that revealed the plot of a murder almost pointing to Munangagwa himself. This triggered the flimsy fabricated charges against Scala and Stole. Finding Scala guilty by the courts yesterday could be Munangagwa's move to cover up for the almost two years the man has spent in prison without bail. There is a possibility that Munangagwa was avoiding a counter lawsuit against his government after the release of Job Scala, a possibility that we are looking for in a very few days to come. I strongly believe that through the painful experience he has gone through, God has preserved the man Scala from being contaminated so he can use him in his future plans for the new Great Zimbabwe. See how many have fallen out under the song as a spell. Yes, our God does things in mysterious ways too. Citizens, all we are seeing happening in the nation are signs of the end times of ZANU-PF. Blessed are those that see the light during the thick of darkness. The negative happenings causing many to doubt, give up, or confess wrongly, are simply what they look like on the other side of the flesh. In the spirit, the world of our God, the game is over for ZANU-PF. The heavenly legions are hovering over the nation of Zimbabwe. The fact that it has taken long does not mean it will not happen at all. Remember, to God a thousand years is like one day. Just when the majority of the faint-hearted give up, the dawn arrives. The naysayers shall change their confessions soon and say indeed our lord is god the strength that keeps us and that shall deliver victory is not our own our strength is in the lord god of hosts those that believe in human strength shall always see the impossibilities but we who are driven by the spirit and led by the spirit of the lord are saying good morning to the great new zimbabwe good morning to freedom good morning to peace to liberty to prosperity and to everlasting joy for the nation. Pray, pray and pray even more. Our salvation draws nigh, my fellow change champions. We shall meet in another video. God bless you and remain focused, remain tuned. Shalom. Till we meet again. Goodbye for now. Bless you. Amen.